Hello everyone. In this video, I'd like to go through and show you guys how to uh, complete uh, an assignment in MyIT Lab. So from the Blackboard site or from your browser, you can type in MyIT Lab. I'm going to click on the link here called um, MyIT Lab right here. There we go. And you guys might have an account already set up. Hopefully you have. If you haven't, you'll definitely want to click on student and sign up and register for the course. All right. To do an assignment, let's log into the MyIT Lab. So I'll click on sign in. And my authentication has already been saved, so it gets a little easier every time. I click on the tile here. This is the uh, 14408 course. There we go. And from here, there's a couple ways you can do it. One, you could go into the assignment calendar, uh, or you could go into course materials uh, to access this. It's funny because I, I do this different ways almost every time I do it and find different pathways in there. All right, so from here you guys will be presented with all the folders um, for the course and again I've gone through this in other videos so hopefully uh, in the first week you guys have gone through and looked at the videos on how to run my lab I've also done a couple videos to help you guys with that as well but this will definitely fill in some blanks it's done a little bit more professionally by the publisher so definitely take a look at those the e-textbooks again you guys can go into the e-textbooks I think I showed that as well and open up, and especially the uh, the operating systems class uh, e-textbook. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do uh, an assignment. And the first assignment is the Word Chapter One. So that one can be located. I think I I set it up for Week Three. It's due in Week Three. So if you go into Week Three, you'll notice that it, the Week Three we're actually doing uh, X, Excel Chapter One, but the Word assignment Chapter One is due by that time. So make sure that you. Can I keep on track on this and also keep track of the, the calendar? Calendar will keep a more accurate track of all that. All right, so to do this, uh, I actually went in and, and did this once already uh, just to practice this. And I only did the first couple questions and I got 17%, which you can tell it didn't pass. But I do allow you guys to do the assignment twice. So I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead here and try it again. So here's how it works. So the first time you do that, um, it'll open up uh, a four-step process to do an assignment. Step one is here to download the materials. So I'm going to click on download the materials. And again, you can download all the files into a zipped file, then unzip it somewhere, or you can download them individually. The first file here is the instructions that you need to use to, to complete the assignment. And the second one is the sample file that you're going to need to actually do the assignment. So let's download the first one. Those are the instructions. There it is there. And from here, what you can do, um, what I'd recommend, is mine automatically goes right into a download folder. So what I would suggest is that you save it somewhere else. Or I mean, let's let's just I'm going to double click it, open it up into Word. So we'll double, double click, click that, that. And, and from, from there, there, I'm going to move over here, here so you can see it in the video. All right, hopefully you can see that. And oh, maximize it. There we go. All right, don't forget to click this little, um, in the yellow band up here, it says Enable Editing. So you click on Enable Editing. And that's the first part of doing the assignment is to download the instructions. Now, the second part is to get the actual working file. So in this case, I'm going to download this one. And you'll notice down here at the bottom, just above the taskbar, you've got the student working file. And again, I'm going to click and say just open that directly this time. And that'll open up the Word. And there it is. And again, Enable Editing. All right, so we've got two documents, the instructions and the working file. Now, I'm pretty much done with step one. So if I close that, I can go to step two. Now, step two is basically the instructions, the step-by-step -step, um, instructions they want to train you in uh, to, to do the assignment. Now, if you're doing the assignment before you've done the read the e-text or the simulated learning, you're probably not going to be able to get it all done properly. So... The way that this course works is that you would open up the ebook, you'd read through the case situation, you'd read the instructions, you do the simulation, you do the, the, the PowerPoint presentation, then you've got the, the core knowledge to go ahead and, and perform this assignment. So the, if you click on preview the steps, you're going to see here that there's several steps here. There's actually just 14 steps for this assignment. And the first step is to download and open up the files, uh, which we just did. I mean, that, that file is right there. It's worth no points to download the file. The second thing they want you to do is they want you to uh, convert the file from an old Word format into the new Office um, 2016 format and save it with your last name and your first name there. 
So what I'll do here is let's go ahead and pro go through that process. I'm going to open this up and I'll open up the Word document, which is on another screen here. So I'll just move it over here. There it is. And take a look at the top, up here at the top. So what they want you to do is actually rename it. So maybe, uh, or what, what I do, oh, not that screen, what I do is I take um, the instructions, which are right here. Maybe what I'll do is I'll split my screens here so you can see both at the same time. That might help out so we don't keep full. So on the left-hand side, you've got the instructions. On the right-hand side, you've got the file. Now, they want me to change the name of the file to this right here. So I'm simply going to just grab that, not, not the period, but just grab that. I'm going to copy that, and then I'm going to go back up to this document and save it. So let's go in here and go save, and I'm going to go save as, and I'm going to put it into a folder that's sitting on my OneDrive. And I, I went through that Office OneDrive with you guys before in a previous video. So let's go into the OneDrive right here, and let's find, and I'm going to have to maximize this so I can see now, and I want to give it that name. So I'm going to paste that name in. So I'll go here, and I'm simply going to just edit this right here to say Caldwell Ryan. I'll use the same capitalization. They actually call that uh, Pascal case. Uh, it's not uppercase, that's lowercase, it's Pascal case, or is it camel case? I, I forgot now. Um, which means that they're capitalized with no space in there. The second thing that the instructions said was to change it from the old format to the new format. So that's from a DOC, a doc file, to a docx file. And that's the new 20, 2016 file format. So I'm in the correct folder. Oh, no, I'm not. I have to go to my Douglas College. And I'll go into my, I created a folder here called CSIS 1190. I created one here called week two for word assignments one, two, and three. Sounds good. Now I already got one in here that's got the same name. I already practiced this. So I'm going to click on save. It should ask me probably do I want to save with the same name? Uh, well, it probably had some subtle difference in that one. All right. So I've completed the first and the second instruction. Now I go to the third instruction, which wants me to go through the process of checking the document for the spelling and the grammar. He wants me, and it's being very clear. It says he wants you to change, you know, one word to another word or correct the spelling. It's misspelled. He wants you to, to uh, replace words, uh, etc. So th this is the instruction right here. All right, well, let's, let's go in and do that. So I'll just uh, close that off for a moment. Let's open my document back up. And oh, it was, oh, it did ask me to replace. Perfect. So I'll do a new fresh copy here. So I'm going to replace that. Now, it wants me to go in here and check my spelling, my grammar. So if you've read the e-textbook, you've gone through the simulations, you know where that is. It's in the review tab at the top, and it's in the first group here called proofing. It's the first tab, the first object here called spelling and grammar. So we'll click on that. And it automatically opens up. And sure enough, there it is. It told me in the instructions it wants me to change that to whisk. Okay, so that one's done. Apples, it wants this one, this one, or this one. Now, it has three options. And if you read the instructions, it wants this one here, I believe. And the spell checking is complete. So it looks like I did everything right. Now, I might have forgotten, you know, something. I didn't read the instructions totally properly or something like that. But let's say that I'm pretty happy with what I've got so far. I can go back in here and carry on. So... Oh, yeah. So it does say here that it's not misspelled. Oh, so that's good. Um, moving on, it could say, let's use, uh, uh, look for another uh, word uh, to replace. So we go back in and look for this word, which I think, where is it? Right here, uh, sprinkle. And they want you to go in and, and change the word. So how do you do that? How do you go back in there and change it? Uh, can I right click it and select another word? I can do that. Or could I go in here and click on this thesaurus and then use that option? No, that's another option. And it gives you the ability to, to select uh, another word. All right, so dust, and then I think uh, to get it in. All right, now why didn't it go in automatically? It's just, oh, this is just coming up with it. Maybe I have to type it in. Okay, so I'll type in dust, and we should be good to go. So from here, if I click on save, I've updated that assignment file, and I can just carry on through the instructions. So I can go back down and finish the next one, change the, you know, the word dark to light and so on, follow the instructions. Now, 
if you take a close look at the instructions here, it says that I should get nine marks for running the spell checker and the grammar error. So they want to check to make sure you understand how that tool works and how to apply it. And they're asking, getting you to do three things. Some people might change the spelling of this one, be able to change it to one of the options available and actually change the spelling with the correct way they want it. I'll put it here, um, which gives a pretty good understanding that you know how the spell checker and the grammar checker works. Uh, they probably could have made this more complex, but it's not bad. Um, Anyway, so and so on. So in chapter one, there's learning objectives uh, that they want you to be able to do with spell checker, with formatting, with margins or whatever have you, all the way through the assignment. It's not very long. This assignment will probably take you half an hour, maybe. Um, when you're done the assignment, you can save it. There we go, save, and close Word. So I'm gonna close Word, and I'm gonna close the instructions, I'm gonna close the, um, there we go. And I've completed step two. So I worked on my assignment, assuming that I've done, completed the whole thing. That's on, let's say I'm done. And now I want to upload this and have it marked. So I go back and choose the file. And I know where I put the file. Remember, I put the file inside of my online courses and inside the one here called uh, CSIS 1190 online. This one right here. There it is right there. I'm going to click and say open. And I'm going to say upload that assignment. So I'm going to upload my assignment for marking. This is successful. Oh, good. And it looks good. Now, if I, if I uploaded the wrong one, and I get students every year, they upload the wrong file. They upload the original file sometimes without their work, and they basically upload a blank. And then they come back to me and they say, oh, I uploaded the wrong file. Can I just resubmit it? Well, I'm going to give you guys two submissions. So you get two chances anyways. So really take care about uploading. Be careful of this. And it's like anything. If you were uploading a document, like a resume for a job application, you want to triple check that you've got the right file. So if you're not sure of the file, you should well, you should be able to just look at the name of the file and say, yes, I can see the X. I know that that's the right file. And I've got my name in there. That's right. So that's good. I can, I can select. I'm done. I, I feel good. If I want to redo it, I can click the undo and upload another file. If I feel pretty confident, I can go to the next step. And the next step is right here, submit the assignment for grading. All right, so I can click on here, submit submit the for, submit the work for grading. And oops, I gotta click on the screen. And kudos, your file has been successfully submitted for grading. Uh, close the assignment. Okay, so I'm I'm done. So at this point, my IT lab has now received your file and it, it's already gone in and it's starting the marking process. And here, by just doing those two things. I've, I've got 17%. I've done my two attempts. I have not passed because you need 50% to pass the assignment. Although you do get accumulative marks. I get a lot of students that only do half an assignment. They submit it. They still get part marks. So definitely if you've done half the assignment, submit it anyways. Don't wait till the last second. I get students that wait till the last second. They can't upload it. There's internet problems and then they, they don't get it in. So try, try to avoid that. Now, um, that's, that's the mark. Now, when it comes to the feedback, how do you get feedback on this assignment? And it, to get the feedback, um, it's always a little tricky here, but what you can do is go into the grades and you wanna see how were you grade? How, was you, how were you marked? What did you do right? What did you do wrong? And this is how it works. If you go into your view custom, you can actually go in from here and it takes a bit of time here to do that, but just give it a second. And uh, all right, so you can see right here, word assignment one is right here. There's the grade. Now, I think I might have to go back into my grade to do this. So it doesn't show here, it shows here. And from there, um, let me just see. Okay, here we go. It was in week um, three, I believe. So this is, this is why I'm doing the video to show you guys how you get feedback on this, because it's not easy. And from there, you have to click on this one here, view the submission. I think that also shows up in another area, but you want to view what you submitted and how did you, why did you get 17%? So when you click on that, it comes up and says, Ryan, you did it once here, you did it again here. I basically repeated it both times. But if you want to see, you have to click on the 17%. It's not intuitive. And this is, I get, uh, students never can seem to find that out how this works. It's kind of a trick here. But if you click on the 17%, it opens up a whole world of 
feedback. It tells you what you did, what you did right, what you did wrong. It tells you step by step. So if you look here, it says that the first two I didn't get any marks for anyways. So that's zero. That makes sense. Then I did the grammar and spell checker. And I seem to have done that correctly. I got full mark, nine out of nine. And then I did, uh, you know, I, res I swapped out uh, uh, dust for sprinkle, and I got eight out of eight. And I basically didn't do anything else after that. So, of course, I get zero out of nine and so on. So if I want to know how or, or if I did something wrong, I've got these other options over here on the right-hand side. So if you want, I find this one right here probably the best, live comments and reports. The one here says download the submitted file means I could download the file again. And then if I've only submitted once, I can then fix it with my feedback and submit it again to get a higher mark. But here, let's take a look at the detailed feedback that the system delivers. So live comments on the report. And what it does is you can see down here on the left-hand side, it opens up a document file. So let's open that up. And here's Word. It opens the Word document. And it gives you a detailed feedback you have to enable again, always enable, and that allows you to make changes to this. And it goes through and it tells you um, how this was marked. So it told me I got 17 marks out of 100. And then how did I get those marks? I got nine points because uh, were, were deducted because I didn't set the margins. Well, yeah, I didn't do any of that stuff. And as I scroll down, this is even better. It, got, it kind of goes through and it tells me that I didn't do this part where I was supposed to do something with this right here. And it tells me in this one here, I was supposed to do something else. It gives you very detailed, extremely meticulous, granular feedback. And I find uh, when students get into this, they really enjoy this because there's just no way that an instructor could write all this feedback for all their students at this level of feedback. So what you're going to do with this is you're going to go in here and you say, oh, I, I lost points because I didn't do this right here. Okay, well, I can go back in here and I can see exactly what I was supposed to do compared to what I, I originally did. Go back, fix it, and then submit it again. And that's how these assignments are going to work. And it's been, I've, I've, I've used the system for a few years, and I find it's been a very successful tool. A lot of students really like it because of the, of the information it gives you. But you've got to be able to go in there and figure out how these work. Um, yeah, so it'll t it, and there's more information in here if you want. Um, to have a look at you can and I think this pull down will also give you more granular um, information of how they actually come up with the 9% this is something else I wanted to point out is if you want that 9% it's actually broken down into two tasks here and here to get the 9 let's I, I, I don't have the break the breakdown of this one here because I, I got that one right so when you guys do this you'll you'll be able to go in here and look at the granular level so I could go back and make my corrections, resubmit it, and pump that up to 100%. That's the goal. All right, well, I hope that's been helpful on how to do an assignment in the MIT lab. And uh, you guys should be starting on this one um, in week two of the course. So I hope that helps, and I'll see you guys uh, in the next video.